Hello students, I am going to explain the last chapter, chapter 10, Magnetism. Now, we have, now let me discuss about Magnetism. Before we discuss, can I ask some questions? I am very sure you know something about Magnet or Magnetism. You have learned in lower classes. So, what is Magnetism? It is a property of a piece of magnet by which it attracts other magnetic substances like iron and other things. So, before we go for more about magnetism, let me discuss some facts. What are the some facts? So, we can discuss some facts point wise. First, let me discuss <coughs> we have seen all around us so many types of different magnet, different types of magnet, different sizes, different shapes, different strength, all these magnets are so called artificial magnet. These magnets are made artificially, but side by side there are some magnet which we see from the nature itself. Actually, in the nature, the name of the magnet is not exactly magnet, but we can say it is a lodestone. So, lodestone is basically a piece of iron ore, which is fer ferric oxide, Fe3O4, which shows the properties of a magnet. Now, <coughs> we have seen a piece of magnet has two properties. One is it attracts the magnetic materials like iron, cobalt, steel, etc. And it shows the directive properties means when it suspend freely, then we see a piece of magnet all the time keeps towards north-south direction. So, if you keep a magnet freely suspending, then we will see it hangs north-south direction. So, the piece of magnet hangs freely and it keeps it keeps north-south direction. So, towards the north pole, N pole will be there and towards the south pole, S pole will be there, right. Now, it is observed that two like poles means if you bring north pole and another north pole, we will see they repel each other. But if we bring one north pole and one south pole, we will see they attract each other. So, we, simply you can say that like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other, right. Now, we will go for induced magnetism, induced magnetism, we will go for induced magnetism. What is it? In fact, if you keep a piece of iron here, then it does not show the properties of a magnet. Now, in front, if you bring some iron filings here, 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 you will find there is, there is no attraction by the piece of iron. Now, if you bring in from the iron, or near to the piece of iron or in contact with the iron a piece of magnet then we will see some iron filings cleans near to the end near to the end so iron filings will be here attached here basically near to the two ends now if you remove this magnet if we remove this magnet, we will see these iron fillings falls down, starts falling down. So, when you bring the north pole or south pole near to a iron, iron shows the property of the magnet. Iron shows the property of the magnet and because of this property of the magnet, it is able to cleanse or attract the iron fillings. This is called induced magnetism. Because when this iron is removed, we will see the iron again loses its magnetism. So, iron behaves like a magnet only 
when the iron is kept near to the magnet or in contact with the magnet right now the question arises what is called induced magnetism so induced magnetism is a temporary magnetism acquired by a magnetic material like iron kept in a magnetic field near or contact with a magnet so now we'll go for what is magnetic induction magnetic induction means suppose because of the presence of this iron because of the presence of the magnet this iron behaves like a magnet this is called magnetic induction if the magnet is removed then iron does not show the magnetism and when the magnet is brought near to the iron iron shows the magnetism or magnetic property this process in which a piece of magnetic substance like iron acquires magnetic properties temporarily in the presence of another magnet near it is called magnetic induction magnetic induction is now takes place because of the presence of magnet now suppose we have a magnet say this is north pole this is south pole and we have a piece of iron now we can say since the iron behaves like a magnet in the presence of a magnet then we'll see sure the two ends will be some poles so near pole will be opposite of the near pole will be opposite of the south pole so it will be north pole and further point sure will be south pole now from here question may arise suppose this is a magnet here it is a north pole it is a south pole or for a change i can just reverse this is north pole this is south pole can you say which pole will be the p pole so now let's talk about the 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 nearby pole if it is north pole then sure it will be south pole and if it is south pole sure the p pole the marked the pole p will be n pole right because near end of a piece of magnet will be opposite of the the opposite of the pole of the magnet okay now as we talked about that induced magnetism is temporary we have already discussed that induced magnetism is not a permanent one let me explain about this suppose we have a strong magnet this strong magnet north pole south pole now attach one a pin kept head up so the pin the iron pin will be clinched to south pole now bring another pin attached to the previous one bring another pin attached to the second one bring another pin attached to the previous one in this way you make a chain and then we'll see if you bring few more pins then we'll see that pins may not be attached here because here some magnetism is there due to this magnetism it has some attraction property because of the attraction property all these chains of pins are attached here if the weight of the pins means the last pin including the last pin is more than the attraction force then it may not be able to hold now remove the north pole or south pole or this magnet slowly keeping holding this topmost pin holding the topmost pin this is the topmost pin topmost pin if you hold with your hand and you remove the magnet then we'll see slowly slowly the last pin and then 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 all the pins will be detaching from the topmost because the topmost pin gets attracted property because of the presence of the magnet so the topmost pin gets some magnetism this magnetism is 
due to the magnet induction so it is temporary and when the magnet is removed we have seen that the topmost pin means iron pin loses its magnetic property right so we can say that induced magnetism is not a permanent one it is a temporary now we'll go for the last topic of magnetic field and field lines magnetic field and field lines let me discuss first about field now we have seen if we keep a magnet all around the magnet we will see if you keep anywhere else near to the magnet or magnetic needle the magnetic needle has a particular direction other than the north south direction of the geographic north pole and south pole so we can say wherever we keep this needle if it shows a particular direction then we can say at that point there is magnetic field so magnetic field is around the magnet there is a space all around the magnet there is a space where the magnetic strength is experienced by a magnetic compass so the space all around the magnet where a compass experiences of magnetic strength we can say there is magnetic field now we will go for field lines what is field lines we have seen in the practical case also when you plot when you plot keeping the north and south pole in a fixed place and if you bring the compass then we will see the compass shows a particular direction and if you plot all this compass bringing one after another then we will see it will be like a curved surface it will be like a curved surface it starts from north pole and it goes to south pole actually magnetic field lines are the closed curve which starts from north pole goes to south pole outside the magnet and inside the magnet it goes from south pole to north pole similarly if you draw few more field lines you will see then all the time the field line starts from north pole and goes to south pole outside the magnet and inside the magnet it goes from south pole to north pole similarly if you draw few more magnetic field lines here then we will see again the field line starts from north pole to south pole right so what is magnetic field lines magnetic field lines are the closed line which starts from north pole and ends to south pole outside the magnet and inside the magnet it goes from south pole to north pole it is a continuous curve and the strength of the magnetic field shows by the help of the strength experienced by a compass so strength depends on the distance from the magnet as well as the position of the point from the magnet and the direction of the magnetic field lines shows the tangent at that point if you draw a tangent at this point then this is the direction of the field lines similarly if you draw a tangent here then this is this is the direction of the field lines here if you plot a tangent then we will see the direction of the field lines at that point if you plot a tangent here then we will see the direction of the field will be along this direction so we can say simply the direction of the field will be the tangent at that point drawn on the field lines so we have discussed the beginning portion of the magnetism now next class now at present we are not able to do any more topics so next class i will cover the rest portion thank you so much